द टॉपिक वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग इन दिस वीडियो इज क्रोनिक माइल्यूड लिक्यूमिया और सी एम एल वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड मेनी टॉपिक्स ऑफ माइलोइड माइलोइड न्योप्लाज्म एंड लिम्फोइड न्योप्लाज्म दिस इज द अनदर वेरी टॉपिक ऑफ माइलोइड न्योप्लाज्म दैट इज क्रोनिक माइलोइड लिक्यूमिया वी विल बी कवरिंग दिस वीडियो अंडर फॉलोइंग सब हेडिंग्स इन विच वी विल बी फर्स्टली कवरिंग द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑन सी एम एल देन वी विल बी कवरिंग पैथोजेनेसिस ऑन सी एम एल देन वी विल बी कवरिंग मॉर्फोलॉजी ऑन सी एम एल एंड देन वी विल बी कवरिंग द क्लिनिकल फीचर्स दैट वी सी इन द पेशेंट्स ऑफ सी एम एल सो फर्स्टली कमिंग टू द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ सी एम एल सी सी एम एल इज़ ए कंडीशन इन विच वी सी द एक्सेसिव प्रोलीफ्रेशन ऑफ प्रिकर्सर्स इन माइड लीनियज ओवर अ लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम वी नो एज अ नेम सजेस्ट दिस इज़ अ क्रोनिक माइलोइड ल्यूकेमिया सो दिस इज़ अ क्रोनिक कंडीशन सो द कंडीशन विल बी सीन इन ओवर अ लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम एंड इट इज़ एक्चुअली द माइलोइड ल्यूकेमिया मीन्स वॉट यू विल बी सींग इज द एक्सेसिव प्रोलीफरेशन ऑफ प्रिकर्सर्स इन माइलोइड लीनियज सेल्स सो द सेल्स वुड बी ऑफ माइलोइड लीनियज द प्रिकर्सर्स ऑफ माइलोइड लीनियज टू बी प्रिसाइज एंड वॉट द प्रिकर्सर्स ऑफ माइलोइड लीनियज आर एफेक्टेड मोस्टली आर द ग्रैंडोसेटिक प्रिकर्सर्स एंड मेगा कैरियोसेटिक प्रिकर्सर्स we have already seen the normal hematopoiesis in normal hematopoiesis we have seen the, this is the myeloid lineage and in this myeloid lineage the granulocytes are formed by the granulocytic precursors and the mega karyocytes that is platelets are formed from the mega karyocytic precursors so in the condition of aml what develops is the excessive proliferation of the precursors of granulocyte and excessive pr uh, proliferation of precursors of the mega karyocytes this is seen in the patients of cml now what we will be discussing is the detailed discussion on the pathogenesis of cml now coming to the pathogenesis of cml what happens in the patients of cml is there is a translocation between the chromosome number 9 and chromosome number 22 there is a gene that is abl gene which is located on chromosome number 9 and a bcr gene which is located on chromosome number 22 what happens after translocation is that chromosome number 22 gets both two genes that is bcr and abl gene abl gene and now this chromosome number 22 this newly formed chromosome number 22 is known as philadelphia chromosome so this philadelphia chromosome is formed after the translocation between chromosome number 9 and chromosome number 22 this bcr abl gene encodes a protein that is bcr abl protein actually there are two parts of this protein one is the bcr part and second is the abl part the property of this bcr part is that it it is the dimerization moiety so it has a tendency of self dimerizing and abl part this abl part it have a ability to perform tyrosine kinase activity that is constitutive tyrosine kinase activity so these two parts perform their functions independently so what happens that this bcr part bcr part do the self dimerization and because of this self dimerization the abl part gets activated and it does perform the constitutive kinase activity that is it continuously phosphorylates other protein substrates this leads to the activation of certain growth signaling pathways such as ras pathway jackstat pathway or akt pathway which further leads to the growth factor independent proliferation now the growth factor independent proliferation is generally seen in the precursors of granulocytic precursors and uh, mega karyocytic precursors in these cells this growth factor independent proliferation is generally seen and this leads to the condition that is chronic myeloid leukemia now what happens in the cml is that when cml progresses as natural history of disease it is a slow progression because it is a chronic condition but when it progresses without any treatment over a course of time of 3 years then what we see that cml extends to the accelerated phase what happens in the accelerated phase the clinical features of the cml like anemia and thrombocytopenia it goes worse in in the accelerated phase and when this patient of cml in accelerated phase is predisposed with certain cytologic abnormalities cytogenic abnormalities like duplication of philadelphia chromosome like trisomy of chromosome number 8 or isochromosome 17q then this accelerated phase of cml progresses to the condition of blast crisis now what we see the uh, now when, when we see the blood and the bone marrow of the patient it resembles the acute leukemia because there is a blast crisis blast these blast crisis actually what does it means is that the uh, blast count is more than 20% in these patients it could be myeloid blast it could be lymphoid blast so it could be myeloid blast crisis or lymphoid blast crisis it actually resembles acute leukemia we know that in acute leukemia there is more than 20% blast seen in the uh, blood and bone marrow so here in the patient of uh, 
CML when it uh, progresses to blast crisis it also resembles acute leukemia and because we are seeing here that it could be myeloid blast crisis or lymphoid blast crisis it is the evidence that the CML originates from the pluripotent cells of both myeloid and lymphoid potential because here we are seeing that it can progress to either myeloid blast crisis or lymphoid blast crisis. So this was the pathogenesis of CML. Now what we will be discussing is the morphology of CML. Now coming to the morphology of CML, what we see in the morphology is firstly what we do when we do the bone marrow biopsy, we see that in the bone marrow biopsy there is a hypercellular condition that we can appreciate in the patients of CML. Hypercellular condition is seen actually due to the excessive proliferation which is seen in the granulocytic precursor and megakaryocytic precursor cells. So there is a development of hypercellular condition in a bone marrow. What we see also is the C blue histocytes. C blue histocytes are nothing, these are actually the scattered macrophages which are seen and these macrophages actually contain the abundant amount of wrinkled green blue cytoplasm. So there are many C blue histocytes that we can see in the bone marrow of a patient of CML. Now when we do the blood examination, what we see that in blood there is a condition of leukocytosis that is developed in the patients of CML. The WBC count is, in, is increased in the patients of CML which exceeds more than 100,000 cells per millimeter cube. The cells such as neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, myelocytes and metamyelocytes are mainly increased in the patients of CML. Why are these cells increased? Because this is a condition where there is an excessive proliferation of granulocytic precursors. When granulocytic precursors increases, so obviously the granulocytes will also increase. That is neutrophils, eosinophil, basophil will increase and their precursors like myelocytes and metamyelocytes will also increase in the CML patients. Now the next thing that we see in the patient of CML is massive splenomegaly. It is a characteristic finding that we see in the patient of uh, CML. So massive splenomegaly, some amount of hepatomegaly and some amount of lymphadenopathy are the things that we see in the patient of CML. Why is this condition of massive splenomegaly developing in the patient of CML? The reason is there is an extensive extramedullary hematopoiesis in the patients of CML. That leads to the massive splenomegaly. Why there is extensive extramedullary hematopoiesis? Because the normal bone marrow is filled with hypercellular condition and these cells are nothing but only the granulocytic and megakaryocytic precursors. So when the bone marrow is filled with these type of precursors, the normal hematopoiesis could not carry out. When normal hematopoiesis does not occur uh, optimally, then what happens that there is a need of extramedullary hematopoiesis and when this need is very extensive, when there is an extensive extramedullary hematopoiesis from the spleen, the spleen size increases and there is a condition of massive splenomegaly which is seen in the patients of CML. So this is a, a finding which is helpful for differentiating the CML from other diseases like AML, ALL or CLL. So we can differentiate this uh, CML from other diseases on the basis of only this splenomegaly. The patient of uh, CML usually presents with dragging sensation in abdomen because of this massive splenomegaly. So this is a characteristic finding what we see in the patient of CML. After this, we will be discussing the clinical features that will be seen in the patient of CML. Now the clinical features that we see in the patients of CML, the, CML, the patient of CML is generally of adult age group and because it is a chronic myeloid leukemia, it is a chronic condition, the onset of the disease is generally insidious. What we see as a clinical features is anemia, weakness, fatigue in the patients, anorexia and weight loss in the patient and the characteristic finding is splenomegaly what we see in the patient of CML. So splenomegaly, how can we uh, appreciate that the patient is a patient of splenomegaly? There is a dragging sensation in the abdomen which is seen in the patient of CML and this refers that the patient is, uh, uh, is suffering from splenomegaly and we can also appreciate some type of splenic infarct in the patients of CML. So the splenomegaly is to such extent that it can lead to the splenic infarct. Now when the CML is in a stage of natural history of disease, there is a slow progression of the disease, then these symptoms are mostly prominent. But when the disease progresses to the accelerated phase, the anemia and thrombocytopenia worsens and it is increased to very much extent. When the patient comes to the blast crisis phase, then this is a condition in which myeloblast or lymphoblast are increased more than 20% and it is the case that resembles the acute leukemia. 
so this was all about this video if you like this video please hit the like button do share with your friends and if you want notes for this video or more such videos message me on my instagram handle link is given in the description below thank you